little Giants fan, Sean and Sean. We're talking about some Giants football, something that we love and we're very passionate about. What's going on, everybody? So uh, today we are here to talk about uh, the uh, coaching with the Giants and the rumors about the uh, coaching changing coming uh, for the Giants this season. So first I wanted to uh, discuss about uh, a tweet that came out from Ralph Bacchiano today. And it's about uh, Giants cornerback uh, Janoris Jenkins as he was not happy about how James Betcher was using him in his system. And this is what Janoris Jenkins had to say. He said, uh, you've got to use your weapons. I'm the one, I'm the only one in the league that doesn't travel with the opposing team's top wide receiver. And I don't understand why. So uh, for me, when I look at that, I'm thinking a lot of this has to do with uh, the system that James Betcher is running with this uh, with this team, like defense wise, and it's just not like clicking really. It hasn't been clicking at all really this season. Guys like have been lost, and guys have been confused with the coverages. And it's one thing I worry about in the near future if the Giants continue to keep him with this team, you know? Yeah, basically what he's saying is uh, the defense that James Betzer is running is a 3-4, right? Now, if you know Giants fans, the last two Super Bowls that we went to in 2007 and 2011, we ran a 4-3 defense, which I prefer a 4-3 defense because you got the four pass rushers that can get to the quarterback, which eases some of the pressure on the corners and safeties out there. Uh, James Betcher, you know, coming over from the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, where he had Chandler Jones as a pass rusher. He had Honey Badger, and he had Patrick Peterson. Great corner. What we have right now is we have young players. You know, you got the rookie, DeAndre Baker. You're trying to incorporate Julian Love, plus you have Corey Valentine and stuff. You have an older veteran back there and uh, Anton Padet, but he can't get the job done. And, and as you know, um, our um, Jabril Peppers, he's out. So there was other guys in there and uh, not getting to this game. And another thing is we're not getting a pass rush. So when you don't get a pass rush, you cannot – it it puts a lot of pressure on the corners and safeties. The Giants have not had a good pass rush, mm -hmm. and he's hurting the team. So what Betcher's defense is not doing – is not putting the players in positions where they can be successful. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is the right type of defense for the Giants. And the young players look confused. There's always guys wide open, touchdowns being scored. You know what I mean? And as you know, weekly and weekly, there's a lot of points put on the Giants defense. Yeah, like, and one prime example for that pass rush is Leonard Williams, who the Giants had just traded for. I feel like... Which, you know, yeah, this trade yeah, hasn't exactly. been very successful for the Giants. And now I'm looking at in this offseason, not not including him with this team. I think this team really needs to solidify that pass rush to help these young guys in the secondary excel. Yeah, and, they put out on the island all the time. Yeah, and like like it feels like, you know, like uh what's his name? DeAndre Baker, Baker. he's like on an island all by himself, and he's not getting that help. And I don't know if it's a either Antoine Bethea. I can't tell if it's Jabril Peppers. I can't tell who's in the back or even in the slot to help him. Communication, like, you know. Yeah. There's not and there's not a lot of communication out there, you know. And I feel like a lot of this has to do with the coaching, you know. And there's just a lot of problems going on on that defensive side. Yeah, you know, basically what what they need to do as we have four games left is they need to simplify the defense. Yeah. Make things a little bit easier for the DBs <clears throat> and the linebackers and stuff. And try to create some type of pass rush. Come up with some type of creations. Maybe you have to blitz more. Whatever you need to do to, to, to get some of the pressure off the defensive backs. Because now you got Sam Bill incorporated in there. He's been... Mm -hmm. Going from side to side, you still have uh, Janoris Jenkins out there. But um, as you evaluate this team going further, you want to make sure that the guys are uh, progressing, 
not de, you know, de, uh, degressing, degressing, as I would say. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we want we want them to get better. We want them to learn on the job. So as they go into next year, they'll have a better grasp of what they're doing out there. And there's, you know. Yeah. So and then uh, now I want to flip over to the offensive side because all, as we all know, Pat Shermer who's running the offense and, and is the head coach. He hasn't, uh, he's, he's been doing some positive things. I'm not going to say everything he's doing is great, but he's done some positive things. But the, the main issue I have with Pat Shermer this year with the offense is uh, the late game calling. Because if you really look at the Giants game, they've had a lot of close games where they were decided by like three points, Until it one point to a blowout. Man. Okay, as we talk about the offense, right, the creativity that Pat Sherman has to be, like like a Mike McCarthy is, how Sean Payton is, how Matt Nagy is, and all those, and Andy Reid. We have weapons. You have Saquon Barkley. You have Evan Ingram. You have Sterling Shepard, you have the young and talented uh, Darius Slayton, and of course you have the veteran and the smart <clears throat> veteran in Golden Tate. Use these weapons to your ability. Now we have a young tight end who's been coming along. What's uh, the young man's the name is? Uh, number Caden 82, Smith. Caden Smith. Uh, he's gotten got a little bit into the group. So use these weapons. You know what I mean, we know our offensive line has been struggling, especially. On the side where our, our, left, our left tackle, Nate Soldier, is, and then probably where John Jalapeno is the center, which things are going to have to be addressed in the offseason. That's going to have to be addressed. But the thing is, why we have this season, uh, we have these last four games, we need to improve on offense, and he needs to use all those weapons and put them in positions where they can be successful so you can score more points. Because the offense has to score mm -hmm. more points to keep the defense off the field. Yeah, and I, one thing uh, we we also have to fix is the uh, the run game. Uh, the run game, it's you have to solidify the run game. That's the most important thing about this offense and making it flow is getting that run game. And I feel like Saquon Barkley, I know he hasn't been the best over the last ever since the uh, injury, but I feel like the offensive line they just got to come out with toughness, man, and block better, you know? I know Saquon hasn't been reading the holes a little bit, but he, we got to block better, you know? And it's just got to happen because when you – every time you get that run game going, it makes everything else so smooth. Oh, especially the play action. You know? The thing is, Barkley says uh, everybody's heard it design it, which it is. I mean, we're near the – your last four or five weeks of the season. So guys are going to be banged up. But, you, you know, you just go out there and suck it up. And, you know, you give 100% out there. But uh, what we need is a little bit more better blocking for the line. And the line is a better line than we had <clears throat> last year. We brought in some better players. So we expect Barkley to have a better, you know, have a, a bigger holes opening, more lanes for him to go through. But... As you can see, over the last couple of weeks, it hasn't. Even he had a couple of good runs against the Green Bay Packers today, but we need to get that line uh, blocking better as the season goes on. Because one of the things that they're going to have to draft is a left tackle, and they're probably going to have to draft a center going mm -hmm. into the draft. Yeah, Jalapio, uh, the whole game, he was getting demolished. It was absolutely terrible, man. And that's one thing I. The offensive line, if we can really solidify that offensive line, I think it'll be better for the run game and the passing game because on the left side, you know, Solder, Sedarius Smith was just tearing Solder up. Yeah, man. yeah, and, protect them. You know, you got to make sure your quarterback's blind line is always protected. It's priority, you know. So uh, now I want to uh, lean to the uh, coaching, uh, the about the uh, rumored coaches for the uh, Giants that uh, people are putting yeah, out there. Yeah, the media out there and uh, reports either yeah. was coming from. So, and uh, there's, for my first one, uh, there's been rumors about uh, Matt Ruley from Baylor. A New York and, guy. And, yeah, Matt Ruley was an assistant offensive lineman coach 
for the Giants when Tom Coughlin was coaching. Now, I feel like this can be a really good advantage for the Giants to look at because he's going to get looked at by a lot of teams. But since he's been on that Giants uh, coaching staff, I feel like this will be an advantage for the Giants and maybe they can end up getting this guy. Now, no, I have you're right. If I can add to that, Sean. Yeah. Familiarity. Matt Rule is somebody like Urban Meyer, a program builder or changer. Mm -hmm. He went to Temple. If you know, back in the 90s and the 80s, Temple had one of the worst football programs, college football programs in the country. He helped build that around. Okay. Then he's now he's at Baylor. Mm -hmm. He's helped building the, the Baylor program. And you know, Baylor had all types of accusations with the players. And, um, you know, they got rid of the coach who was a, a long time uh, Texas high school uh, great coach. And um, he had his dream job, but uh, they fired him. <clears throat> and uh, Matt Ruiz came in there and uh, he structured the program and he's changed things around. And uh, they might be in the bowl championship series and in that final four. So, he is a program changer and builder like Urban Meyer is. And then um, he learned under Tom Coughlin, and he has ties to the Giants, which John Mara loves, and so does Howard Tisch. And this is what's been put out in the media. Yeah, so, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, Ruley was Get coaching attention. from uh, 2015, 2017 at Temple, and there's some notable players that I uh, looked at. And some of the guys that he's put out in the NFL who are still in the NFL currently and are pretty solid players. Uh, Matt Ioannidis. He's got Robbie Anderson, who's on mm -hmm. the New York Jets. He had Hassan Reddick, who's a linebacker. Oh, yeah, he's now for the Arizona pick. Cardinals. Deion Dawkins, who uh, is now with the Buffalo Bills. And Nate Harrison on the Colts. So... He's put out some really solid players, you know, coming out of Temple. And his record when he first started out at Temple in 2013, when he first started, my fault, 2013, it was 2-10. and 10. Like, you know, 2-10, and 10, you know, it's his first year. Then as the years went on, 2016, 10-3. and 3. But before that, 2015, it was 10 and 4. So the guy is really like progressed as a coach throughout his career. And then as he went to Baylor, his first year at Baylor, 2017, 1 and 11. One game they've won. Then now in 2019, they're 11 and 1. Yeah, and you exactly. talk about someone who can really change a program, really change a team. I think this guy is a excellent person to have as a head coach yeah you can see team. where he's went he's been able to recruit build and change things and go from a negative situation to a positive situation that's the type of person you want in that building yeah absolutely so uh i, I you know i feel like this guy could really change his team i feel like him having that familiarity with the giants is a, a big Big yes, I think. Yeah, and, that's and I and uh, John Mara likes. And, and yeah, and I feel like John. Yeah, you know Tish. that familiarity with John Mara and Tish. I feel like it's excellent, man, to have him on this uh, roster or on this coaching staff. So I think him becoming that next head coach would be one hell of a move by the Giants. Well, if you look at a Paul right now, that's the rumor around the NFL is like, he's a hot candidate. And, yeah. Uh, even people at Florida State looking <clears throat> at him, he was going to be the Jets head coach. I mean, uh, Woody Johnson loved him. Uh, the only thing that uh, came between him and Johnson, I think it was a couple coaches they, uh, they wanted to bring it with him and uh, uh, Woody Johnson and uh, McCagney. But uh, that didn't work out, and it's probably a loss for the Jets because they would have mm -hmm. a good, a really good coach that would take them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The and uh, there's one more guy I want to look at, which you guys probably know him very well, Jason Garrett. And Jason Garrett, he actually used to play on the Giants. New Jersey guy went to Princeton. Yeah, he played on the Giants in 2000, 2013. He was also a uh, quarterbacks coach for the Miami Dolphins, you know. So that's 
So that's how he started off as a coach. And then ever since then, he was the Cowboys in 2007, Cowboys offensive coordinator, moved up to assistant coordinator, assistant head coach. And he was also awarded assistant head coach of the year in 2007. And then he also became the hurt head the uh, interim head coach in 2010 when Wade Phillips was uh, fired. And after that, he's been the head coach ever since 2011 for the Cowboys. And he's also had a decent record above 500. And, and anything above 500 to me is positive. And I feel like that's perfect. But a lot, I know a lot of Cowboys, uh, a lot of Cowboys fans, uh, they always thought they're like they always blame Jason Garrett, but you know a lot of it has to do with Jerry Jones the way he runs things, and I feel like Jason Garrett is a good head coach. I feel like he is, and I feel like he can really uplift this Giants offense. And he's right. What we know about Jason is he's a winner. He won Super Bowls. He was on uh, two of the Cowboys Super Bowl teams. It was like the 91, 92 team under Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson always says he was a smart guy, uh, knows football well, listens, a uh, great communicator. What he is is a winner. Now, people say, okay, he's at Dallas. He hasn't won anything. One of the problems that Jason Garrett has in Dallas is he really can't be his own person because Jerry Jones is always stepping in or not giving him the freedom. He's always looking over his mm -hmm. shoulder. As you know, John Mara and Steve Tisch, they're going to let you go out and coach the team. They're not going to come down on the sidelines and start asking you about plays and looking over your shoulders. Now, maybe a fresh start for him coming and coaching the Giants. Plus, he's a quarterback whisperer, and he knows how to coach quarterbacks. And I think he'd be a good fit with Daniel Jones. Yeah, I, I, I agree, you know. And he was also uh, the coach of the year in 2016, you know. The, I, I, the guy's got some skills as a coach. I mean, uh, especially with having Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, I feel like he can do a lot with that. And and also a young guy like Darius Slayton, and you got a Golden Tate. And, and you, Sterling you know, Shepard. Yeah, Sterling Shepard. You got plenty of guys. Even, too. Next year they're probably going to have with – Caden Smith and Evan Ingram, probably yeah. as their tight ends. So you know that he's got a lot to work with if he comes here, and he's got a lot of experience because he's been in the division for a long time and a lot of familiarity with being with the Giants. So I feel like this right here could be that answer, but we'll have to see. You know, so we'll see. Yeah, Garrett, there. he's one coach, and also there's Mike McCarthy out there, and then you got. Some coordinators that we know about, uh, Dennis Allen, who runs a great defense there with the uh, New Orleans Saints, and then <coughs> I'm not sure what the uh, defensive coordinator who's at the uh, San Francisco 49ers is out there. Yeah, too. and then there's a, another honorable mention is uh, the guy out of uh, on the Panthers, uh, Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera, I believe he could really solid also coach. Uh, yeah, experience, runs a really tight ship, mm -hmm. uh, has the respect of his players, and he went to the Super Bowl. Remember that, folks, with Cam Newton? Went to the Super Bowl. Dave Gellerman <coughs> has a connection with him. I think he'd be a good fit, too, if he came in. See, you need, and you need people who know how to run a team and get players in the right position, and they're tough. Ron Rivera's tough. Yeah. Giants need somebody who's tough. I think Matt Rule is tough. And maybe Jason Garrett smiles a lot, but he's an organized person, and what he does is he wins. We've had a lot of losing coaches around here lately. We need winning coaches. Yeah, like Jason Garrett, anything above 500, like I said, is excellent, man. And he's been – I know, like, you know, when he was with the Cowboys, or as he is now with the Cowboys, like, they haven't looked so great, but – the guy, he really, he really has something going, and I feel like he can't bring it out just because of the team he's well, on. It's a whole circus there with yeah. Jerry. You know, the players don't go to Jason if they have problems. You know, we're just going to go to Jerry. You won't have that problem with the Giants. Gellerman, Mara, and Tish are going to let you do your job and coach. Okay, so 
we need somebody in here who's going to be able to do their job and coach, organize, make good coaching decisions. He'll be able to bring in a good staff. But this is this is stuff that we're, we're – this is all rumors and stuff and the, as we go through the rest of the season. When the season ends, it's going to be a very hot topic. Are they going to keep Sherman? Are they going to get rid of Sherman? Mm-hmm. There's already rumors about all these coaches. So we're going to see what happens. It's going to be a lot of juicy stuff to, to talk about. Yeah, so – uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens for the Giants uh, for this upcoming off season. But you guys stay tuned, man. I'm going to have uh, a pregame video out soon for the next game. Uh, Monday night, I believe, against, yeah, the, against Eagles. the Eagles. Yeah, against the Eagles. And, you know, we, that, know we they, hate the Eagles. And, you know, I, the Eagles, man, they're something, man. They just – I just watched uh, a couple highlights against them against the Miami Dolphins. I really think the Giants have a chance. Yeah. Game so, will be at Lincoln Financial Field with those yeah. hated Eagles fans who are the most arrogant fans like the Cowboy <laughs> fans. So, we got to get our guys all geared up. We want you guys to be ready. A little for the game. And uh, tune in to us and watch our videos. We got a lot of juicy stuff to talk about. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of stuff out. I might even do a live uh, – a live faith I might do something live on Facebook this week I'll let you guys know but you guys stay tuned I hope you guys have a great rest of your week go Giants go Giants